Very good morning to you. I'm Morris Barrett and I've got another food for thought. Something for you to think about this week or over the weekend. I've been thinking about the presence of God and maybe I haven't reached an answer but I want to provoke your thoughts. The presence of God is obviously to do with feelings or an awareness of him because when we're in a meeting we say, oh, I feel God's presence. I'm aware of him. But God's presence is everywhere and that can happen in any place. Any time we can tune in, I don't, don't like the word, but we can tune into God's presence because he's everywhere. David even said, if I make my bed in hell, God is there. Let me read it, Psalm 139, verse 8. If I ascend up into heaven, you are there. Well, obviously. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. So God's presence is everywhere. But God is not in hell. Surely we don't believe that. God, God's home, his throne is in heaven. His throne is on earth and God dwells in heaven. And he very rarely leaves it. There's a few instances Moses is an example. God says, I'll come down and deliver them. And he came down onto Mount Sinai. With, with Sodom and Gomorrah, God said, I'll come down and see if what I've heard is true. But it's very rare that God leaves heaven. That's his home. And Jesus is now at his right hand. So Jesus on earth is in is in heaven. God's not in Mars or Jupiter or anywhere else but heaven. Well, in the Old Testament, God's presence went with them. So I understand when we say, I want to feel God's presence, because in the Old Testament, God said that he would go with them. Moses, after he'd interceded for the children of Israel and asked God not to destroy them, he also said, will your presence go with us? And uh, they did. Exodus thirty three fourteen, And God said, My presence shall go with you, and I'll give you rest. So God said he would go with them. But it's different now. We're in a, a new covenant, not the old one. And God doesn't go with us now. His presence doesn't go with us. His presence should be in us. That's the challenge I want to make. Jesus had the fullness of God in his body, the divine nature, but God was still in heaven. Jesus was on earth and they had the fullness of God in his body. And we also can be a partaker of that divine nature. We can have God in us. In the Old Testament, God was with them. Now he's in us. Don't you know your temples of the Holy Ghost? He dwells in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And the Holy Ghost is in us, not with us. In the Old Testament, he was with them. And they did the, the eight gifts of the Spirit, apart from speaking in tongues. All the manifestations of the Holy Ghost are in the Old Testament. And the disciples cast out devils, healed the sick, raised the dead. Before they'd been filled with the Holy Ghost. The day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost stopped being with them and came in and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the difference. So now we are carriers of the presence of God. So surely I don't need to go to church and say, oh, God turned up. What an insult. God turned up. God did us a favour. God never leaves heaven and comes to your church. You feel his presence, but God is in you. His spirit is in you, not God himself. His spirit is in you. Well, Jesus had the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We know that. Well, let me read where we're partakers of that divine nature. And that's what will cause us to live a holy life. His presence will not. People go to church and feel God's awesome presence. Then they go out and are worldly. There's people who are sleeping together committing fornication, but they've been in God's presence. So God's presence is not enough. God came down to the children of Israel on Mount Sinai, and 40 days later they're dancing naked round a golden calf, thinking that that's God. So his presence is not enough. We need more than that. We need God inside us. We need his divine nature. Let me read it. 
uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16. This is to prove that God's in us. Don't you know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? He didn't dwell in them in the Old Testament. Let me read 2 Peter 1.4. This is where he says we're partakers of that divine nature, whereby we are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. I don't think I told you the scripture. It's 2 Peter 1.4. That these, by these, you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We are partakers of that divine nature, and you need God in your mortal body to manifest. Otherwise, feeling his presence outward when an atmosphere that's outside you you need to know god inside so we need more of god himself more of god's spirit in us not just his presence if we're going to be separated from the world and from religion well the time's gone but i hope i provoke your thoughts we need more than his presence that's just an atmosphere that's an awareness of him we need his spirit in us we need to be filled with god and that divine nature, or else we'll never f manifest the life of Christ in the real world. So seek God himself, not his hand, or even his presence, seek God himself. Well, the time's gone, so have a wonderful week, fill with the Holy Ghost, fill with God, fill with Jesus Christ, and keep thinking. <laughs>